Hey everybody. As I promised, I was going to do another video on the uh, 2018 Challenger Cub Challenger 750 EPS electronic power steering. So I'm not going to waste your time with idle chatter. I'm going to get right to it. Um, the bed has four tie downs, one in each corner. And I've used them a couple of times holding firewood down and they seem to be pretty strong. The tailgate is a pickup style as to where it has a handle. And the 500 was pinned and I didn't like that at all. So to dump the bed, it's got a handle on both sides. Basically pull the handle up to make the bed go up. It's got a strut on that side that helps the bed rise. They did a good job aligning that strut because you can see the strut is fully extended. So it's not pushing the bed forward. So if you had to take that strut off, it wouldn't be a problem. It'd actually be easy to put um, hydraulic over electric or electric back there to uh, make this an electric dump bed. The, uh, the shocks are coilovers. They are adjustable, they're gas. The rear axles are CV style like a, um, like a front wheel drive car, a lot of four wheel drive trucks are nowadays, in that there are no U-joints, there are constant velocity joints, rubber boots, so you want to keep an eye on them if you pop a boot and the grease comes out and dirt gets in, it's going to be expensive to repair. I have a couple of parts that I looked up to see what their prices were, I'll mention here soon. It's got four wheel independent suspension. There are grease fittings everywhere, which is cool. Um, the exhaust system is pretty short. It goes from the head there to the muffler, and then the muffler goes out the back. The muffler is stainless steel. The pipe in the middle is probably, obviously, some other kind of metal um, because of the surface rust and so forth. If you needed to work on the engine, you could pop that strut out and the bed is going to tip back a little bit further, not a lot, but it's not going to be quite as tight as it would be if it didn't. <clears throat> the cylinder head, of course, um, spark plug, coolant temperature uh, sensors. I'm going to guess one is for the computer and the other one is for the gauge. The throttle body is in there. It's probably the TPS right there, throttle position sensor. Up top, it looks like it's probably the fuel injector right there with that blue lock on it. And you have the cool coolant uh, duct here for probably the transmission. Close this up. I've already got some things opened up on the interior is to make this video a little bit shorter. Um, I mentioned in one of the other videos that that point there and the one down here, um, I haven't seen them yet, but I was told they're for Nerf bars. So if you wanted to do that, the mounting provisions, provisions are already there. I <clears throat> uh, also wanted to mention that this has four-wheel disc brake, and it's got these killer tires and rims on it. Yeah, I know they're dirty as all get out, but they're a pretty expensive option, honestly. And I'll go over some parts prices that I uh, took the liberty of looking up here shortly. The doors are actually pretty cool. They're automotive style, handle on the outside, release handle on the inside. Now I've already taken the seat and the engine cover off. This cover here just snaps in. The seat does the same thing. You can see the, the things here. It's these slide under here, and then those those big uh, gold pins pop in here. So on the passenger side, you've got your fuel tank. Um, underneath here is where your fuel pump is going to be. This is probably a vent line, a fuel in and a fuel return, and the electrical connector for the pumping gauge. So to get to the fuel pump, it'd be easy if you have to. Uh, just take these lines off, take off the electric, spin off this big plastic nut, and the whole module is going to pop right out. Uh, your fuel filter is right here. Your oil filter is down here. Your starter is back in here. 
so far nothing too serious as far as maintenance goes I mean you know access that is um, your shift cable is here so if you need to adjust that for any reason uh, your air, air filter box and it actually gives you recommended oil types for different ambient temperatures and that's pretty cool under here is probably um, an ignition module maybe the PCM um, voltage regulator just maybe an, an ignition module in the PCM but again they made things pretty easy to get to so you're not ripping half the machine apart to access different things let me go around the other side real quick okay under here you just you just spin this this lock here to access this cover and your batteries under here are relaying a couple of various connectors and fuses and so forth um, I gotta say that when it was seven or eight below zero this battery spun the machine over effortlessly I had a Ranger 6x6 and one of the first things I replaced was a battery because it just it was terrible I'm not gonna lie it's terrible so they at, at least put a half decent battery in here um, On the back side, obviously you can get a back window for this as well as the upper door halves and, and seal the cabin pretty well. Um, I don't know how well you can see this, but it's got these connecting points here and you can put bars across the back and you can hang tools, a rifle. Um, I haven't checked, but I'm going to. Uh, I'd like to be able to hang my chainsaw up there as well. I hate it bouncing around up in the cab when the bed is loaded with wood and it won't fit back there. Uh, one other thing is too, if you don't have your seat belt connected, it reduces the vehicle speed. Exterior mirrors, of course, on both sides, totally adjustable. Front suspension is basically the same. Four-wheel independent. Coil over shocks, gas, adjustable have an electric fan on the radiator. The radiator's right here, it's aluminum. There's the steering. You can see the motor here for the electric, electronic uh, power steering. The uh, master cylinder for the brakes. It actually has a front sway bar on it, which is pretty cool. It's right here. There is some storage in the front end. I should have popped this panel off because it's cold and everything is being a pain in the neck. But the center of the hood actually comes out. <clears throat> and you've got this whole side here for storage. Um, your radiator cap, your radiator reservoir, coolant reservoir. And here's the air intake, which is really cool because it's if you're that deep in water, you're floating or you're at the bottom and it doesn't matter anymore. Um, under those covers, you can access a few more components. Uh, front wheel disc, brakes, front wheel CV style axles. The winch, of course, which already broke. Uh, you've got the guards here on both sides. That'll help protect the axles. The LED headlights, daytime running lights. And as I mentioned in the other videos, this vehicle does have brake lights, turn signals, emergency flashers. Um, so you can, I mean, if your state allows it, you can register and run this thing on, on the highway. Up top here, you see where it's got the divots already if you want to mount a light bar or individual lights. So that's pretty cool, too. Um, my little cheat sheet here. I want to go over this real quick. Now your fuel fill, of course. This is uh, the Challenger, obviously, and Cub decided to call it the Challenger because they wanted to challenge a competition. It's actually made by High Sun, and this vehicle goes under several different badges, and at one time it was the, uh, the same as the, the Rhino. Um... 
The transmission is a CVT, continuously variable trans. Basically, it's got a clutch on the engine and one on the transmission. And they open and close depending on load and RPMs to change the gear ratio. And that's why you're able to achieve the speeds that you are. They claim 45 miles an hour. I've had it a touch over 40 and it was not redlined. So there's no doubt in my mind that it will do 45 plus. Um, <clears throat> see what else I want to tell you guys oh uh, like I said I, I put some prices together for different things on this so that you can get an idea if you ever have to um, the ECU the electronic control unit or the PCM powertrain control module or the brain if you have to buy one of those from from Cub you're looking at $321 and excuse me I have a cold Believe it or not, the belt, the CVT belt, I've had snowmobiles and I think they were like 50 bucks for, for a drive belt. This one is $246. So I recommend that if you've got one or you're going to get one of these, that you try and pay attention to uh, your terrain and what gear you're in and try and prolong the belt as long as you can. Um, if you need to replace one of those CV axles I was telling you about, front rear left right it doesn't matter they're 331 dollars a piece um the fuel injector just the injector itself is 133 dollars if you need a rim a factory rim or a factory tire they're both right around 215 dollars a piece so you've got two four six eight thirty sixty so you got 860 dollars alone in rims and tires on this machine and again, I, I've been harping that the price you pay for this and what you get for your money is, is pretty darn good. And, and I'm going to stick with that. Um, I still haven't had any real issues with this. Like the other video, I said a little rust on the steering wheel and the winch cable broke. And the winch switch is on the dash as opposed to a tethered cable. So that's a pain in the neck. But it's not a, a deal breaker, obviously. Um... To this date, I've had no issues with the machine. It starts up when I want it to. I've done my plowing, no problems. The four-wheel drive works really well. That's got uh, the four-wheel drive, obviously, and the differential locks front and rear, so you can lock all four wheels up, and your chances of getting stuck are, are pretty slim. I've been in some stupid places, and, and I haven't had an issue getting back. Um... I really don't think I've got a lot more to say about this. Uh, you know what? Let me go over the stuff you guys probably already know. Um, it's a rack and pinion style steering. Electric, of course. Uh, the engine is a 37 and a half horsepower. Um, <clears throat> it's a 735 cc. The minimum ground clearance on this is about 12 inches. They say the towing capacity is about 1,200 pounds and the cargo bed payload is 500, but I can tell you I've had a lot more than 500 in it and the suspension did not complain a bit. I shouldn't say that because my warranty is still active. Um, you can get this Challenger in uh, yellow, blue, red, and camo, but I do know that the camo costs a little more money, probably because they have to pay a royalty to real tree because there's a real tree. Um, uh, not a label, but it's it's kind of here and there. The word real trees here and there on the machine when it is a camo. And uh, the the warranty on this is a one year, just just like everyone else's that you're going to pay a lot more money for. I inquired about an extended warranty. They told me it is not offered. However, I did find a company out there that offers an extended warranty, but I've never heard of them, so I probably won't do it. I've been burned on those before. But uh, anyway, I hope this video helps you all out. And if you're on the fence, I hope this pushes you on or completely off. So if you have any questions about anything, just, just leave me a message and I'll do my best to answer it for you. Y'all have a great day and take care.